I have never worked a single nine to five day in my entire software engineering career. A typical work day for me is I wake up around 9.30, eat breakfast, film a TikTok video, log into work around 10.30ish, work until two, eat lunch, go to the gym, attend meetings around like 3.30, log off at 6.30, and then around nine, I'll check in to see if I missed anything and then plan for the next day. And all of that was a lie because I actually don't have a typical day because the typical nine to five job day is is dead in software engineering. So in this video, let's talk about what's going on, why things are changing in software engineering, especially for Gen Z people, and what you need to do to be prepared for a non-traditional life in software engineering. So sit back, chill, relax, and let's get started. First, let's talk about what's going on. In March 2020, COVID hit, and the whole world went remotely. And for people in tech, this was actually a huge blessing. You always could work remotely, just take your laptop wherever you are and code, but now you're a officially allowed to work remotely. Life is good, meetings in bed, no more morning commutes. For the first few months, it was actually great until these tech companies got a whole lot smarter. You see, remote work is a double-edged sword. Some companies found that since there was no more of a morning commute, we can now set meetings at 8.30 instead of nine to really maximize the workday. Or why not just set a meeting at 1 p.m. during everyone's lunch block because you're at home after all, you can just eat your lunch while you're in the meeting. So companies start to milk their employees. And for legal reasons, I was a student during this time, so I'm not talking about any company that I worked at or have worked at in the past. But to be honest, this really bothers me when companies try to milk employees because during an average eight hour workday, employees are only productive three and a half of those hours. So anything beyond that is straight up diminishing returns. But anyways, fast forward a year after that into March, 2021. The COVID vaccine is out. That means people can travel more, but COVID was still very much a big thing. So companies couldn't enforce a return to office policy just yet. In this era, we saw a lot of digital nomads. In fact, one of my friends worked in Antarctica, Croatia, and Thailand during this time just because she was able to. But in terms of the workday itself, well, 2021 was the era of the big tech boom. Perks, pay, hiring spree, and they went super flexible on employees. One of my friends working on Amazon, he used to work six hour workdays and his team policy was straight up 11 to five every day to favor and help the employees. So the ball was entirely in the employee's court they were dominating the market. Then September 2022 happened and the money that was in 2021 all of a sudden disappeared and the government, the tech companies, everything pretty much dried up. They went into hiring freezes. There were layoffs all of 2023 and into 2024. And this made for some weird work life and some benefits were disappearing. Some companies even forced people to come back into the office. And if you didn't oblige, you actually wouldn't be eligible to get promoted at the company. But still for the people who did return, it was anything from a typical nine to five work life. Because over this COVID remote period, everyone realized these three things about software engineering. One, it really does not matter. Software engineering's write, review, test code, each person is assigned a particular task to do. Like for example, let me code this button on the screen. I write certain JavaScript code to do this, and then my teammates go ahead and review the code. There's no set time in which this has to get done as long as it meets the overall test deadline. Two the global reliance and network. Software companies have customers all across the world. And in order to cater to sometimes their very urgent needs, and by urgent, I mean like 10 p.m. on a Saturday, you need to be willing and able to help if you're the designated on-call support person. And so while you might not have a strict nine to five, eight hour day, your work transcends time boundaries. So no, not having a nine to five job doesn't mean you're working any less or any more. You work whenever and wherever. Three, optimize for employee productivity. So this is very personal to me because it applies to me. So I'm based in the East Coast, but my software engineering team is based into the West Coast. So technically their nine to five would be a 12 to eight here. Do you know how awful a 12 to eight sounds? Like imagine starting your day when everyone's halfway done with theirs and then ending when the sun is down. I just can't imagine anyone working a 12 to eight and you probably wouldn't be as productive Productive. How productive can you be seeing the sun constantly going down? So instead, when I joined the team, I talked with my manager and we pretty much decided as long as I'm available for the meetings, I get my tasks done, I can work whenever. But trust me, it's not just because I work remotely. I have a friend who goes into an in-person job. He works a nine to three. Software engineering is changing. Now, here's what you need to know to prepare yourself for this unorthodox life as a software engineer. First, work all 
hours. In my first couple weeks, I pretty much was glued to my computer. I would work as much as I can, message people as often as I can, attend every single meeting, and I didn't say a word about, oh, these are my work hours, or I need work-life balance, because I wasn't sure what I even wanted to do or what I would be most productive. But the thing is, through working all these times, you realize that there are certain times that you are working better. Like one hour between 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. might be worth four hours between 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. So the lesson is put the time in at first when you first join your job, find out what works for you, then try to optimize for your schedule. Two, quiet quitting is BS. There was a big trend last year in which everyone was like, let's just do our bare minimum because corporate America is so evil. And some of you are watching this video thinking that, oh, no more nine to five, means I barely get to work. I can do whatever I want to. That's not true. No more nine to five means you're more productive in the hours that you select. Because truly, if you do the bare minimum, especially in tech, you won't learn, which means you'll probably go obsolete because your skills will go obsolete and then no one will want to hire you. So rather, optimize your work so you can actually go above and beyond. Get that promotion ASAP. Case in point, I just got promoted at work last month. Three always be responsive. Slack is the messaging system that my company uses and I have the app on my phone and anytime a coworker messages me, I always respond within seconds. You see, working your own hours is never a problem unless people feel they can never reach you. And sure, sometimes it's 9 p.m. Maybe you don't want to get into a work conversation, but at least, at least, acknowledge that you read the message and say you'll get back to them on whatever concern they have. And trust me, like I said before, being responsive, especially within seconds, will make you seem punctual, responsible, and reliable, and will help you get promoted, case in point, again. I always love this quote by Bill Gates. Software is a great combination between artistry and engineering. Obviously, we know in software engineering, you have to code, you have to build things, you have to write JavaScript, Python code, but also artistry, the creative elements about software engineering, sometimes we forget about it. This is actually one of the reasons why I say AI probably won't fully take over software engineers because it's just not as creative. It doesn't have that artistry element to engineering. And that is exactly why the nine to five scheme doesn't exactly work in this field. You see, so many times I've gotten great ideas in the shower or in the middle of the night. You think that if I just waited to implement those ideas, I would be as productive, I would be as great of an engineer as I am? No, you think of these ideas and you implement them pretty much right away. You fail at them and think of those ideas further on. If I'm only like, okay, I'm only gonna work within these hours, this nine to five job, maybe like between 9 a.m. to 12 p.m., like my brain's not even active. How effective of an employee would I be? Or we all know that people have a post-lunch coma, so no one's actually productive after 1 p.m. Why not just actually take a break between like 1 p.m. and 3 p.m. and then just resume later on when you have your energy again. You see, it makes no sense to actually have a nine to five job in software engineering anymore. At least that's what I think. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And lastly, I really appreciate you guys watching this video. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you're interested in more software engineering content, exactly what do software engineers actually do? You might like this video right here.